You talk about classified documents? Yeah, Never let's mind. talk about yeah, let's talk about some classified documents. I love this. Everybody came in expecting the classified documents talk. We've talked about Minecraft, Slayer, and Cats. So April sixth, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin goes into a briefing, uh, and they're like, Hey, we've got a problem. Um, there are current ish documents about the war in Ukraine that are class of top secret classified intelligence stuff. Uh, floating around on Telegram and on Twitter. Very quickly, people are able to look at these documents, and there's only two or three of them floating around at first, uh, and then figure out that, of course, they had come from 4chan before uh, they made it into Telegram it and Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, and s they were, uh, from the best we can tell, some people were arguing about the war in Ukraine on 4chan, um, and then to win the argument about like casualty numbers, someone dropped some of these classified numbers, classified documents. Next level, like how did they get into 4chan though? They got into mm. 4chan uh, via a Minecraft Discord server. Uh, Minecraft uh, Earth Maps Discord server, which is still <laughs> up to this day, still operating right now, uh, with a warning to stop sharing government documents. <laughs> Uh, so it was about 10 images, uh, somebody, I think on March, yeah, here we go. A, uh, it, somebody had posted like about a month ago, uh, here have some classified documents and it's like 10 different pages, uh, from this, from this bigger leak. Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody replies immediately. Nice. You got it. You got it pulled up. Yeah, here it is. And then Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So good, it's bro. So funny. It's so gamer. Oh my god! Yeah, this whole this whole story is so gamer. Um, it's so gamer. It's like about these primal forces on the internet, which is <laughs> lonely gamers trying to impress each other. You know, like that's 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 what's that's what messes me up about this whole thing, really. And then we'll you know as we're gonna get even deeper <laughs> into where this stuff comes from and what the story is here. Uh, you know, government documents like this have been leaked a lot in the past 20 years, mostly mm. for like ideological reasons or people have been tricked into getting things out. It sure looks like, based on the available evidence, that the source of this was just a guy that thought he had something cool and wanted to impress people. Um, <sighs> teenagers, mostly. So... <laughs> So yeah, they end up on they end up on this uh, <laughs> on this Minecraft server. I saw these documents on the Minecraft server. Literally, while I'm writing the story about this, uh, they vanish. This guy deleted the post and then kind of disappeared from the server. Uh, don't blame him. Um, but so they made it onto this Discord server from another Discord server uh, called Wow Mao that was a like a fan Discord for a YouTuber. Um, okay. and then there was, so there's like 10 documents here. There was more documents in wow Mao. <laughs> and then before that, the original origin discord is, as we've got pulled up on the screen, a server called thug shaker central. <laughs> he would like transcribe things by hand. And then he would go into the discord and post these long posts uh, about like this is what the government is doing. Here's the intelligence I'm seeing. Let me walk you all through this. Like trying to educate what he saw as Bro. kids in his community about these classified documents. Let me teach you about what's going on in the world. And the the like they interviewed one of the members, one of the teenage members of this community, and they would do like prayer groups, um, and they would talk about like physical fitness, and they would game. All mm -hmm. is part of this discord group. So, so at some point OG, uh, gets mad that doesn't think that they're paying close enough attention, um, stops actually transcribing the documents, uh, and starts like printing them out and photographing them. Uh, and this is probably going to be, I think long-term what screws him and helps them figure out who he is. Bro. Uh, just stopped while you were ahead. Mm hmm. 
so we think there's probably a photograph of around 300 documents that he would just print up and take pictures of them. Um, the biggest pack that's kind of floating around most publicly is around 54. Um, and it is everything <laughs> from stuff about the war in Ukraine to like Intel about communications that the U S is listening in on, uh, and its allies and its enemies, rumors, all kinds of different stuff, just kind of a grab bag. Uh, it was like, he was just taking the raw intelligence reports that he happened to have access to and just taking pictures of them and just uploading them to discord. Dude, so, I mean, wow. a, you can't control 24 people in a discord server. I'm surprised it took as long as it did, but eventually it kind of started to get out and they started to share it. Uh, you know, went into other discord groups and then into 4chan and then on to telegram and Twitter. And then that's when the Pentagon was like, hold on a second. <laughs> Where did this come from? It's just wild to me that all of a sudden you have people in the government talking about Discord, Minecraft, like these actual dusty fossils of government talking about these things. And they have no idea what they're talking about either. Like, it's wild somebody, to me. Somebody had to tell Joe Biden what Discord was. <laughs> Bro. Somebody oh had to explain Discord to Joe Biden. I would love to have seen that. I, I would know. Give anything. I want to see that briefing. Like, who was the intern? Who was that junior staffer? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you remember ICQ? Yeah. <laughs> Yo. You know the telegraph you had at your home when you were a kid? <laughs> it's kind of like that, except everybody has one and you can send pictures. And do they use it to coordinate their, their tag games? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they meet up for checkers, sir. This is how they meet up for checkers. Oh, God. Because they're photographs. Uh, the guy was not great with OPSEC. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in the background of these photographs. When I say stuff, it's like uh, things that they bought. There's a receipt in one of the pictures. Yes. <laughs> you can what? see like a customer copy. What? I don't know, but I can tell that it's a receipt. It says like customer copy and there's a little bit of text. Oh my um, there's like a, a box for a hunting scope. There's a thing of gorilla glue. There's toenail clippers. What? Like a bunch of objects. Uh, there's like a, a cracked screen. Their gamer keyboard is in the background. Like a, a oh you know, God. like a mechanical RGB? keyboard. Yes. Yes, it did. Glowing <laughs> red. Love it. Yeah, Ooh. yeah of course. <laughs> course um so they weren't like you know they'd started meticulously transcribing these things by hand and disseminating them to the people in thug shaker central um and then just started taking photographs and got really sloppy got really sloppy um so i can't they're gonna get him you know <laughs> like it's gonna mm. happen L-Dex. what is going on over there l decks anyway continue <laughs> <laughs> what, um, why? <laughs> I don't know. Continue. I like how pleased with yourself you are. I, Thank you. This is my first Minecraft like creation. I'm so happy right now. Honestly, it lo- it looks like low. It, it looks like low X. I can't. It doesn't even. Listen, man. I'm a struggling artist in Minecraft. Don't don't hate. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe we're ta- I cannot believe Samir that we're talking about really serious like security issues and you're <laughs> writing out L decks in Minecraft. I've got some I've got some breaking. Uh they got oh, him. They got him. They got him. Somebody's they're going to feed me the info. I'm looking right now, but they they've got him. They got him. That happened like it just got announced. Wow. Whoa. Look, I mean you you actually called it. You were just saying they're going to get him. They've just got him. New York Times has it. Federal investigators are searching for the person. Blah, 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 blah. Da, 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 da. They've got his name. We know his name now. National Guardsman. A okay. National Guardsman. Yep. Wow. Looks like, okay, so this is, they know who he is, but don't have him in custody yet, is what it looks like, and have, and have now published his name. So he was an airman. Uh, da, 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 airman, his name was Jack T. 
T-E-I-X-E-I-R-A. Okay. Do, I'm familiar with. Yeah. And they found, like, people have been able to find his his social media. He didn't delete it, so there's, like, family photos and stuff online. So oh, he was an Air National Guardman. Soon. And in his position, he had access to, to highly successful, highly sensitive briefings. Wow. So uh, mother is in Massachusetts. They've talked to her. Confirmed that her son was a member of the Air National Guard, and she had recent and he had recently been working overnight shifts at a base on Cape Cod. In the last few j- days, he had changed his phone number. She said, "That's that. That's another interesting part of this." According to the the Washington Post story, um, he knew that like the initial New York Times story was going to break. Uh, he had deleted Thug Shaker Central, um, but a, but then had like made a different. Discord group uh, and recontacted a bunch of his friends. Mm-hmm. And apparently he's very worried. He's scared. He knows what he knows that something bad's going to happen mm-hmm. if he doesn't know exactly uh, what the consequences are going to be. Oh my gosh. This is okay. Uh, do we have any sense of what the consequences might be? Mm. I mean, you look at what happened to Chelsea Manning, to reality winner. Uh, I mean, my my sense is jail for a while, a long time, you know? And this is not, like I said, there was life and death stuff in some of these documents. Yeah, so that's one thing we we hadn't gotten to just yet is, okay, classified documents. Like, what's what's in this, what, what was in some of these documents and... Yeah, what was the significance? So to kind of lay some of that out, uh, the most sensitive stuff I would say was kind of from was classified documents that were that were from around February to March um, and were related to Ukraine. So the kind of the situation in Ukraine as it stands right now is that it's kind of turned to this long, slow grind where Russia in the eastern part of the country is attempting to kind of push in, but has been completely stalled out by Ukrainians' uh, defense. Um, and there's specifically kind of fighting around a city called Bakhmut, um, where Russia is just kind of feeding troops into a meat grinder, uh, mostly Wagner mercenaries. Um, their Ukraine was planning and has been planning a counteroffensive. Uh, we've known this for a while. They're going to push, they're going to attempt to push Russia out of various parts of the country. Uh, some places that Russia has held since 2014. Um, so in these documents, there were uh, like maps of where Ukrainian battalions were, uh, maps of where like surfaced air missile batteries were on the Ukrainian side, um, kind of assessments of casualty rates that showed like where the weakest parts were and kind of the beginnings of what Ukraine's counteroffensive plans were going to be. Um, there's no way that Russia hasn't seen this now. Mm. I think this might be the first time that in a little while, you know, probably months for some people that they've thought about the fact that there is still a deadly war happening. Yeah. It's right now, you know, and, 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 and now it's going to be brought up back again. And this is the context that this is actually something that one person, as far as we can tell, has done that is absolutely putting people in danger. It's it's hard for me because I'm so plugged into it. You yeah, know, yeah. To, to kind of see that outside perspective. Because uh, like, and I don't know how much of this I want to say, but like it's this is the kind of thing that a lot of the footage and stuff that's being shared that we know about what's happening on that front line is like particularly gruesome uh, and brutal. Mm -hmm. Um, Like horrifying things that are war crimes that you would not wish on you you, that should not have like war is always awful, right? Um, War is always a crime. Uh, But like some of the stuff that has come out, especially in the last couple of weeks, 
um, some of the things that have been shared on Telegram, some of the videos put like Islamic State propaganda to shame. Mm. Um, poor wow. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wait, it's, what? Wow. Th- there's uh, like specifically a video in the last couple of days that's been going around on Russian Telegram of a beheading um, of a Ukrainian soldier. There's wow. reports of uh, like severed heads on spikes around like Russian troop placements, like gruesome, awful nightmare stuff. Um, and like, that's, wow. that's the nature of this war. You know, that's, that's like, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. And this guy just blurted these secrets out to thug shaker central. And it ended up on a Minecraft discord server. One of the primary, tensions in my intellectual life recently is we, you know, we live in this world now on the internet where you and I grew up in this shit posting culture with something awful in 4chan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we have seen what the consequences of consequence free speech are. Yeah. Um, and just everyone just letting it all hang out and letting their id rule them online Um, but I also have a knee jerk reaction to any kind of content moderation and censorship. And so like, there's these dueling parts of me where I'm like, I don't want this spirit to die, even though, uh, the consequences of it have been really terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, I also have like in violent video games, um, I feel the same way where, I'm like, uh, art should be free to do whatever art needs to do. Um, and I don't fundamentally, to be clear, do not think like you play a violent video game it makes you a violent person. Right. Like, art does affect us. That's why we're engaging with it. Mm-hmm. You know? Listen, there are there are conversations that happen that are going to happen about national security. There are conversations that are going to happen about strategy. There are conversations that are going to happen about you know, what is actually going to happen to act- what has probably already happened, real life consequences. You know, there may have been people who lost their lives over this. That, that That's a really mm-hmm. possible, yeah. already, uh, an outcome that has already happened and would continue to, right? And, and I think those conversations are really important and they should happen along with those conversations, right? And I'm not saying this is more important. I'm also not saying it's less important. Along with those conversations, I think that we should be able to talk about the fact of what kind of culture creates this. No, I think you're we're back. We're you're back. Absolute, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, I, when I was a stupid kid, I don't think, I because you're a kid, you don't realize it. Like, I regret not, I regret saying to myself, well, that's just the way the internet is. Uh, yeah. This is just how it is. I regret not standing up to both anonymous people and my friends more in those spaces and in those moments in helping to direct, like even in my small spaces, like this libertarian, consequence-free speech, uh, libertine thing that has kind of spread everywhere. Um, right. And I think it's like that cult, like that culture is what we have to address and what we have to talk about. And I, I am worried. One of the things that we have to address and have to talk about out of a myriad of things. Um, and I am worried that we won't.